Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching vCenter Operations Manager Foundation. I'll start this lesson off by giving you a little introduction as to what VMware vCenter Operations Manager is, if you're not familiar with it, and the difference between vCenter Operations Manager Foundations and Standard. So with that, let's get started. VMware vCenter Operations Manager is a performance and capacity management tool from VMware. It's VMware's recommended tool for managing your capacity, analyzing your performance, and troubleshooting performance and capacity related issues. vCenter Operations Manager uses a unique badging system which has attractive looking icons with numbers on them that allows you to very quickly identify if you have performance problems or capacity issues such as the health of your vSphere hosts and virtual machines, the types of risks that your virtual infrastructure may face in the future, the efficiency of your virtual infrastructure overall, and if you have virtual machines that need to be right-sized or resized to better take advantage of your server resources. It can very quickly identify the bottlenecks you might have in your virtual infrastructure and how much time you have remaining until a particular bottleneck could impact the applications running inside your virtual machines. It can do what-if scenario planning, the higher-end additions of vCenter Operations Manager can even interface with VMware vCloud Director and Amazon EC2. Now, specifically in this lesson, what I'm talking about is vCenter Operations Manager Foundation. So I just gave you an overview of what vCenter Operations Manager is in general, and there's multiple versions of vCenter Operations Manager. So vCenter Operations Manager Foundation, the version I'm talking about in this lesson, is the most entry-level version of vCenter Operations Manager, and it only offers performance monitoring. It's included with every edition of VMware vSphere, even all the way down to vSphere Essentials. So unlike some other VMware applications, such as vSphere Data Protection for backup and recovery of virtual machines, vCenter Operations Manager comes with every single edition of VMware vSphere. Now, every version of vCenter Operations Manager, Foundation, Standard, or Advanced, is deployed as a virtual appliance. So it's easy to get up and running because you don't have to create a virtual machine, you don't have to install an operating system, you don't have to pay for that operating system, install a database perhaps, then install you know, some third-party tool or some application. You just download the virtual appliance and then you deploy it into your vSphere infrastructure. And then finally, all versions of vCenter Operations Manager now are integrated with the new vSphere web client. So that makes it very cool and very easy to use. Now, one of the most common questions I get is why not just use VMware vCenter for performance monitoring? After all, you have a performance tab on your clusters, on your resource pools, on your hosts and virtual machines. Well, the problem is that vCenter offers just such a vast number of metrics to track. I read that you can have over 15,000 different combinations of metrics to track if you have just 100 virtual machines. And most companies have many more than just 100 virtual machines. Even if you do identify some metrics that you want to track, tracking those vCenter metrics can require so much more work than using a dedicated performance and capacity management tool. That's because it's very time consuming to track those metrics over many virtual machines and many hosts. You really have to do it manually. You have to go and check the performance tabs on the hosts and virtual machines yourself at a scheduled time and day of the week. The other thing is that the metrics can be very confusing and even misleading at times. For example, you've got memory active versus memory consumed. Which memory statistic is it that you're supposed to track to identify your memory usage? And finally, vCenter doesn't use behavioral analysis. So when I say behavioral analysis, what I mean is that it doesn't know what else is happening in the virtual infrastructure. It doesn't know that backups are occurring at a set day and a set time, or that it's normal for you to have high utilization on the last day of the month when the reports are run. By using a tool that does offer behavioral analysis, it will get to know your virtual infrastructure over time and learn what's normal and what's not normal for your particular applications as they're used over time in the virtual infrastructure. 
So for these reasons, VMware recommends using vCenter Operations Manager Foundation at least to track your performance, to monitor your performance, and to troubleshoot performance problems. TrainSignal does offer a full course on vCenter Operations Manager, Standard, Advanced, and even Enterprise Editions. In this course, Jason Nash, who's a VCDX and veteran instructor for TrainSignal, goes into great detail on how to use vCenter Operations Manager for capacity management, and he even shows you how to take advantage of the advanced features found in the Enterprise Edition related to creating custom dashboards and integrating with other applications. It's an excellent course if you're interested in utilizing the commercial editions of vCenter Operations Manager. And of course, vCenter Operations Manager Commercial Edition is also available in a 60-day evaluation along with the full VMware vCloud suite. So at this point, I'd like to get started downloading and installing vCenter Operations Manager Foundation. To do that, let's first go over to the VMware website. Here I am on the download page for VMware vSphere 5.1, and if we scroll down even to the most essentials edition here, you'll see that VMware vCenter Operations Manager Foundation, in this case version 5.6, the latest edition at the time of this lesson, is available with the essentials download. It's also available all the way down here in the Enterprise Plus edition as well. There it is, VMware vCenter Operations Manager. So if we go into view the download for that, I'll scroll down here, and you can see there's really just one file. It's a 1.3 gigabyte OVA file. That's a virtual appliance that you're going to deploy into your VMware virtual infrastructure. Now to save us time, I've already downloaded this virtual appliance. So let's go over to our VMware vSphere web client where we'll get started by deploying the vCenter Operations Manager OVA. Here I am in my vSphere web client and I've selected my cluster. I'm just going to right click on that and go down to deploy OVF template. Since I've already downloaded the vCenter Operations Manager OVA, I'll click browse to a local file. I'll change the file type here to all files. And that shows us the VMware vCenter Operations, or VCOPS, as they affectionately call it, OVA Virtual Appliance. We'll go ahead and click Open here to get started deploying that. I'll click Next. It identifies the vCenter Operations Manager Virtual Appliance, tells us the download size, which we knew was 1.3 gigs. But when we deploy it on disk, if we use the thin provisioning option, it's going to take up 3.8 gigs of disk space. If we use thick provisioning, it's going to take up 344 gigabytes of disk space. This is actually a vApp, so it actually has two virtual machines. You're deploying two virtual machines here inside a vApp container. Everything looks good on this screen. One quick caveat I want to mention here is if you try to deploy vCenter Operations Manager onto a cluster, that cluster must have DRS enabled. If you don't have DRS enabled, you won't be able to deploy it. You'll have to either enable DRS or move a host out of the cluster and then deploy vCenter Operations Manager directly onto that host. So now let's move on. I'll click Next here. We'll accept the end user license agreement. I'll click Next. We'll select the vCenter server and then go down into the virtual data center level. Click Next here. Now in my case, this is a lab environment, so my configuration that I'm going to deploy is small. But depending on the size of your virtual infrastructure, you can go all the way up here to a large deployment, which means that this virtual appliance will be prepared to handle up to 3,000 virtual machines. But that will also mean that the virtual appliance will need 16 vCPUs and 34 gigabytes of memory for the vApp. So depending on the size of your virtual infrastructure, this is the point that you want to scale the performance of the vApp, assuming this vApp is one day going to serve a production virtual infrastructure. Now, in my case, this vApp is just going to serve a small environment, and it says even a small environment serves up to 1,500 virtual machines, and it needs four vCPUs and 16 gigabytes of virtual memory. 
Something I want to point out here is no matter which edition of eCenter Operations Manager you're using, it could be the Foundations edition that's included with all versions of vSphere, all the way up to the Enterprise edition, which is the most expensive commercial edition. No matter which edition you're using, it's the exact same vApp that you're deploying right here. And this vApp is going to start collecting all the data that even those high editions would collect. In other words, let's say that you're using the Foundations version, but later you decide you want to get the commercial edition. You already have the vApp deployed, and you've already been collecting that historical data. All you need to do is to enter the license key, and you'll have access to all the capacity management features that you've paid for with the historical data that's already been collected, and you'll immediately get capacity management recommendations and right sizing recommendations for your virtual machines. So if you're deploying this into a vSphere production infrastructure, I would size it at this point for whatever size your virtual infrastructure will eventually be within the next you know, two to three years, let's say, to ensure that this virtual machine is going to serve you for that time, even if you purchase the commercial edition and enable the additional features above the foundation performance only feature set. So again here, we'll go with the small configuration in the lab, click next. We'll deploy it onto my shared storage, but since it's a lab environment, I'll just go with the thinly provisioned option to save on some disk space. I'll click next here. We'll connect to the default virtual machine network. And since this is a lab environment, again, I'll just go with DHCP. But keep in mind, in production, of course, you would want to configure static IP addressing. Here we'll configure the time zone for the virtual machines. In my case, it's US Eastern. And then we get a ready to complete screen here where we can review everything that we're about to do. I would like to power on the virtual machines inside the vApp after deployment. I'll click finish. And we can see in the task pane over here, we have started deploying the vApp. Here we see the vCenter Operations Manager vApp has been created. So far, the virtual machines have not been added. But if we go up to the home screen and then into the task window here, we can get some more information about the status of our OVF deployment here. We can see it's 5 6% complete. Of course, we also see that over here. We get a little bit more information down here about how it's creating the virtual machines. And this will take just a few minutes to copy the large 1.3 gigabyte virtual machine file and create our virtual machines. I'll be right back. All right, it took a few minutes in my relatively slow lab environment, but the vCenter Operations Manager virtual appliance has been successfully deployed. We can see it is using some CPU and some memory here. And if we go into the related objects, we can see that two virtual machines were deployed inside the vApp, and they're both powered on. So let's go into the UI virtual machine. And we can see here the IP address of the virtual machine that it received in this case via DHCP since I didn't configure a static IP address. Let's launch the console. And here we see the traditional text-based menu interface for a VMware virtual appliance. In this case, we can see we're on the right one. It says vCenter Operations Manager 5.6. And it says we should browse to HTTPS colon slash slash 10.0.1.135, which I know is the IP address it received via DHCP, and log in as the admin user. Of course, we could also use this console here and log in as root. But let's go the graphical route. That's much more productive and open up our web browser. And then here we get the vCenter Operations Manager web interface. Now we're going to log in as admin and I'll tell you the default password is admin. So it's admin, admin. I'll click log in. And this brings up the initial setup wizard for vCenter Operations Manager. So this is the first thing that you would do to configure vCenter Operations Manager to connect to your vCenter server. So in my case, I'll enter the host name of my vCenter server, vCenter.wiredbraincoffee.com. 
Facebook.com, my administrative username, and password. Here we have the Analytics Virtual Machine IP address that it received via DHCP. That's already pre-populated. I'll click Next. And here we get a security alert that vCenter Operations Manager is unable to verify the authenticity of our vCenter server. I can tell you that this is the standard SSL um, alert that pops up and it's okay to say yes. Now we're prompted to change the default administrator password, which you need to do. So the default uh, password, or the current password, was admin. And then the new password needs to be at least eight characters with one digit and one letter. So in that case, I can use my default network password. And then you also need to change the root password for the console, which is actually different from the admin account. So the default root password is VMware, all lowercase. So again, I'll enter my default network password. So just to recap, the default password for the admin account on the graphical website is admin. And the default password on the command line interface for the root account is VMware, all lowercase. I'll click Next here. Now we need to specify which vCenter server we want to monitor, which typically is the same thing, but in some cases it may be a different vCenter server. In our case, it's going to be the same. And I'll use the same thing for the display name and the fully qualified domain name. I'll type in my administrative username and password. I don't have a collection user or password. That's an optional configuration. I'll click Next here. We're not using any plugins. This is the Foundations Edition. So plugins are a more advanced feature than what this edition offers. I'll just click Next. It tells us that there's no other vCenter servers linked to the vCenter server we specified which is fine, and I'll say Finish. At this point, it registers the vCenter Operations Manager with your vCenter Server instance. After vCenter Operations Manager performed its initial configuration, we were brought to this administration portal. So we're still on the website for vCenter Operations Manager. And here we've got a registration tab where we can get information about the license mode that we're currently using. As you can see, we're currently using Foundation and we are licensed. We did successfully register our vCenter Operations Manager with our vCenter server, which you can see down here. It says we're currently connected and we're registered. You could also register vCenter Operations with Configuration Manager. We're not going to do that in this case, but this is also the place where you would configure connectivity to SMTP servers to send email alerts or SNMP servers to send SNMP traps, the SSL certificate configuration, the overall status of the vCenter Operations Manager services. You can perform an upgrade here or an update of vCenter Operations Manager. And then reset the graphical admin account or the command line root account. But obviously this is not where you would use vCenter Operations Manager on a daily basis to monitor the performance of your vSphere virtual infrastructure. To do that, we'll go to a different URL. So I'm going to exit full screen. And then you can see up here that we're at the IP address of the vCenter Operations Manager user interface virtual machine and we're at slash admin. So I'm just going to take off the slash admin. And that brings us to vCenter Operations Manager and it says user interface here, see the UE. And I'll go ahead and log in as admin again using the newly configured password. And this is the vCenter Operations Manager that you would use on a daily basis. So if we expand out the world down here, we can see we've got one vCenter in this case, and we can expand out our virtual data centers. We've got a cluster, we've got hosts, 
We've got virtual machines. So vCenter Operations Manager has learned about our virtual infrastructure through its connection to vCenter. And then it's got some information over here and recommendations to tell us about the overall performance of this virtual infrastructure, including our vCenter servers, our data centers, clusters, hosts, and virtual machines. So obviously this is all color coded down here. You've got different colors. We can filter by those colors. We can show or hide objects if those objects are not of interest to us. And then I can also go to the Relationships tab here to see how the objects in this virtual infrastructure are related to one another. Now again, because this is the foundation version of vCenter Operations Manager, I don't have all the information that the Commercial Edition will give you. I encourage you to try out the Commercial Edition because honestly it gives you so much more valuable information related to capacity troubleshooting, capacity bottleneck identification, and capacity planning. Still, this vCenter Operations Manager Foundation Edition that's included with VMware vSphere is also extremely useful. For example, let's go down here to an ESX host. And we get information here. We can see this host is yellow. If I click on that, I get information about the health of this host. We can see that it's running and the utilization over the last six hours here, the CPU, memory, disk I.O., network I.O., running virtual machines, total CPU capacity. There's a lot of mouse over uh, information that you can gain here. You can see that this host is bound by memory, that memory is its greatest bottleneck. Currently it has zero faults. Now let's look at a virtual machine. This virtual machine has been running well. It's got a good score here. By the way, these scores are important. Not only the color coding, but also the number tells us how healthy, in this case, that virtual machine is. So this virtual machine has relatively low CPU and memory utilization. There's information down here about the virtual machines, uh, resources that are configured, CPU shares, memory shares. But this virtual machine is also bound by memory here. We can click on the workload badge and we get more information about the workload of this virtual machine. We see the virtual machine's workload score and we get a lot of information over here about the workload of the virtual machine related to CPU, uh, not only virtual memory, but also physical memory. So we can see how much memory is demanded, how much memory is used, how much memory is configured. And I really like this black line over here. It says, what does this mean? And there's a lot of information in here. The uh, help is very valuable where it explains uh, the best practices. And in this case goes into great detail about virtual machine memory demands. Also notice up here, we've got some different objects. We can create our own custom groups. So we could group objects by department, environment, folder, function, location, security zone, or service level objective. And then we can go into data stores here and get information about our data stores that are used in this virtual infrastructure. And of course, as you know, disk IO is many times one of the greatest bottlenecks in a virtual infrastructure. We can see that this data store is bound by disk space. So if I click on that, surprisingly, disk IO is not the bottleneck in this case, and it's the amount of capacity of the disk itself uh, that is the greatest potential bottleneck in the future. Currently it has a good score, everything's green, uh, but in the future that would be our potential bottleneck. Here we get a lot of information about which virtual machines are taking up that disk space by simply mousing over the disk capacity that's used. And then down here is a lot of great information about IOs or IOs per second and throughput of the data store as well as disk IO latency. So all these statistics are crucial in really monitoring the performance of your virtual infrastructure and ensuring that the applications used by your users don't suffer capacity, performance, bottleneck, latency, or even downtime. At this point, we've got vCenter Operations Manager Foundation Edition downloaded, installed, configured, and we went through the basic navigation of how to use this vCenter Operations Manager interface. 
By the way, over in the vSphere client, you'll also now see panels on your host and virtual machines with information related to vCenter Operations Manager. So the two are integrated and you don't have to only go to this web interface for vCenter Operations Manager to receive information about vCenter Operations Manager performance statistics. You'll now see some of that, not all of it, but some of it over in the vSphere web client. So with that, let's go back to our slides. And that brings us to the end of this lesson covering VMware vCenter Operations Manager Foundation. I applaud VMware for including this tool, a very valuable tool, with all editions of VMware vSphere, all commercial editions, I should say, not the free edition, but all commercial editions. It's a great tool. It goes well above and beyond what vCenter itself will give you related to performance and I encourage you to deploy it in your virtual infrastructure. I think you'll learn a lot, you'll be able to monitor the performance and ensure that you don't suffer any application slowdowns or even worse, virtual infrastructure downtime. So again, thanks for watching this lesson on vCenter Operations Manager Foundation Edition.